Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Panel Truck Build. We are on to episode two. Okay, I just finished reconditioning the radiator support rods on the wire wheel. Now I'll get them hanging up and ready for paint. Figure, hang them together so then some of the overspray will go on the other one. Just picked up the radiator support from the powder coaters. Came out really nice. Also got my uh, supervisor out here, making sure I do everything right. Slap this on since I got front of the motor all done. It won't be in the way. All we got is headers to put on and I don't think that'll be in the way. Okay, that went on pretty easy. Just had a couple of bolts. Looks good. Nothing like a brand new radiator, huh? Throw that shroud in and then put the radiator in and then bring the shroud to the radiator. But before that, I got these foam seal it up so it's a nice seal so no heating problems got that seal on there looks pretty good let me flip it over see how it fits in there you can see how it sandwiches in there for a good seal radiator shroud is in I go get my radiator support rods they should be dry by now and I'll put those in we got the support rods in, which wasn't too bad. Just two bolts in the back, one, one in front and lock it in. We've already got a lot done. We got the shroud, radiator support, radiator, battery, coil, radiator support rods. We even got the shocks thrown in. This windshield's gonna come out so we could work on the dash. And what we're gonna do, you can see we got a lot of the interior stripped out. We're gonna recondition this whole dash and face panel. We're gonna do the dash satin black and then we're gonna keep it this two-tone effect, probably do like a light gray. Recondition this floor, paint it. So let's get it. <laughs> cleaned up, sprayed it all, nice undercoat finish. Did the dash up, little two-tone black and silver came out pretty good. Then we went ahead and redid these vents with brand new cables. They go to these cool, nostalgic looking. And look how, look how good that works. These things were completely seized up. The other one works. Well, so now we're up to the point where 
A lot of people don't like it. I actually like doing it, but it's the dreaded wiring. Got the full harness here. Obviously we're upgrading it. We're not gonna go to the old school glass fuses ridiculousness. So we got a nice kit from AutoWire and uh, we're gonna start getting cracking on this. You got the main harness, 13 circuits. Then we got the alternator and starter. Got the high beam switch. This is the headlight switch. And there's even a thing here for the ignition switch. Don't think we're gonna use this though because ours is a little different setup. So first things first, obviously, is we gotta mount it up against the firewall near the steering column and then start deciphering all this wire and start running it. Let's get it. Okay, I got the holes marked to mount this bad boy. We're gonna move the cable over just a little bit and it's gonna go, it's gonna go just like that. Of course, I had it measured so the box is straight and everything because you know, I'm OCD. Hey guys, a little pro tip here on wanting to, to mount something, but you want it rubber mounted so it absorbs a lot of vibration. A lot of things need that. Obviously, when we mount this fuse panel, we're gonna want it rubber mounted. So instead of trying to find a piece of rubber, cut it, drill a hole in it, all that weirdness, just get yourself a grommet kit. Most of us already have them. This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight or whatever. You get your bolt and you just find one that has the right diameter, slip right on, and look at that. Nice grommet, soft rubber. You just slide this through, well actually, You'll have a washer. Put this through the panel, slide this behind it, and boom, mounted, and your rubber mounted. Bada bing, bada boom. So let's do it. So because we have this backing cover on here, it's gonna be a little tricky to slide this underneath, but I loosened it up so I could get my hand under there. So I'm just gonna have to fish it through. All right, after a little help from, uh, I needed someone to hold the nut on the outside, tighten this bad boy, now she's in. See from a distance, rubber mounted, rubber mounted on both sides, nice and firm. So now we can start running wires to where the places they need to be. Okay, so what I like to do first is go in order with the shortest wires. The shortest wires so far, this is for the dimmer switch. It plugs in to that. This button you hit with your foot, old school setup for high beam, low beam. However, if you look at the connector for that, it's a three-pronged connector. To the one we have, it is a three-pronged connector, but not the same configuration. Luckily, inside this kit, they supply you with a new switch with obviously the connector that'll match. So let's throw this in. New switch installed and wired. Let's keep on going down the line. <laughs> Have a little snag here this is the headlight switch that we have for the car but the headlight connector for this does not match up to that but luckily this kit supplied us with the headlight switch the headlight switch in took a little modifying of the hole because we had to swap switches out but got it all good in there have to see it all wired up in there everything's new but the issue is now, look at the gap. When the headlight switch is turned off, huge gap. Can't have that, so you're gonna have to shorten the shaft. After the shaft adjustment, as you can see, it closes nice. There is just a little gap there, so I know for sure that the switch is getting all the way closed. Switched out this goofy looking handle to the factory looking one, so it match all the other starter wired up with the power leads going to the fuse box we get to the alternator right now we ran it up and around through here got the lead here so i'm about to wire up the alternator with the supplied harness plugs right in the lead red wire that comes off of this harness is going to share the power so it goes into there with this wire and we're gonna tee it all together with this nice rubber boot. So it fit in there all nice. Looks all nice and factory. Let's get it. Got all the wiring for the front lamps, turn signals, parking lights, all that ran. And the wiring for the alternator all tucked around there nice. 
put the boot on there. And I got a few wires that are coming back. I'm gonna loom all this, obviously. A few wires going back in that goes into this. As you can see, it comes through the firewall right there. Gonna have a nice grommet or something there. Point now where I'm gonna be running the ignition switch. Gotta hook up all these accessory ignition battery lines. I got them all ran to here, cut those to length, and hook it up to there. Ignition is in. All mounted and wired in the back. All tucked in there. We're gonna work on this area. See how there's a gap here? Let me show you what we got to fix that. All right guys, so to fill that hole, we got this right here, factory OEM style gauge cluster, but we wouldn't do that. So we're actually gonna upgrade to this. Fits in the stock area and look how much better that looks. Aftermarket gauges, exact what the other ones show, but they just look a hell of a lot nicer. Fresh chrome, fresh bezel around, so this is really gonna make the interior gauge just pop. So, let's start wiring these bad boys up. Okay, got the gauges all pre-wired up on the bench before bringing it into the car. Cleaned it up with a little bit of zip tying, but these leads here power the gauges because these are electric gauges, not mechanical. So we got the power for the gauges, the ground for the gauges. These two leads are for the dash lighting to light up the gauges. So let's tee all this in and uh, let's get it all hooked up. Gauges all wired up. Everything's lined up well. I made it just a little bit long. I have it on a little box here in case we have to pull the whole gauge cluster out. It's not like how factory gauges are where you can only pull it out about here and then you have to figure out how to disconnect everything and all that. So if we have to go and make adjustments or change wires or whatever, it's easy. So let's uh, drop this bad boy in. button up the screws, and then uh, we'll keep on going with this wiring job. At the tail end of this wiring job, not too bad. Take about, for me, it takes about two, maybe two and a half solid days, because I'm very, uh, you know, OOC about wire, uh, running the wires all nice and everything, and underneath the engine, making sure that you don't see any wires and running it all clean and then looming everything. So I'd say about, I'd say about three days, this thing will be all fully wired. So let's keep going. So it's even got the dome light working. Boom. Pretty much all the electrical is done. Well, most of it. Whole lot of progress getting done on the electrical side of this. Under the engine bay, or inside the engine bay I say. 
we got it all loomed up coming through the firewall all throughout the motor i relocated the coil looks much better there and it is all wired up alternator all wired up and of course we got all the gauge sending units water temp oil pressure down there so it's looking good more and more complete got the uh starter all solenoid all loomed up good to go throw a little power to it this is the turn signal switch and then of course turn the power on you can see there is power going to the gauges turn the lights on the lights it's probably bright in here but you can see that <coughs> left and right indicator and even the high beam high beam indicator works which is down there big old foot pedal thing so all of that is working and even the ignition turn the motor will turn over but we haven't gotten that far yet to fire it up we still need to run the gas tank and the fuel lines and this baby should fire up so in the next episode you should see this thing getting fuel delivered to the motor and its first fire up so be sure to stay tuned for that till then i'll see you next time guys peace